Hey folks, what's up? Antonio Fletcher back with you once again. Today I want to bring up a, a point that pro-choicers often use in response to a common pro-life argument. The pro-lifer would say that the unborn should be valued because the unborn is a unique individual with human DNA. It displays its uniqueness and its individuality therefore should be respected as such. Now, the objection to that from the pro-choices would bring up is something like, well, fingernail clippings have human DNA, um, hair has human DNA, um, sperm and skin cells have human DNA. So are you saying all those things are equally valuable to and in our humans? That's just pointless for you to predicate your point on human DNA, you know, you know, distinguishing some sort of um, value to that particular entity because if you want to argue that point, then you're going to have to say those things are valuable as well. And there are obvious, obvious problems with that argument, but the uh, main response to it is usually you can just say as the pro-lifer that they're committing the fallacy of division. Because the pro-lifer is not arguing that because the whole of a human, rather what encompasses the whole of a human and its DNA makeup, which makes it valuable, must be true of the parts as well. That's the straw man that a pro-life, um, rather a pro-choices are attacking. They're committing the fallacy of division. They're trying to say that the pro-lifer is arguing what must be true of the whole human and its uh, human DNA makeup and its value must be true of the parts with fingernail clippings and skin cells and hair and sperm, etc. That's not what the pro-lifer is arguing at all. The pro-lifer is attacking that straw man and committing the fallacy of division in the midst of doing so. Although that's the common objection to that and it's a very effective uh, counter-objection rather to bring up you can also go at it from a different angle. Here's an angle that I like to go at it. Let's say the uh, pro-choicer uh, responds to you and brings up that point, right? So um, they uh, say to you, well, it's, um, you're going to say masturbation, uh, mass murder by your argument, human DNA, right? Value, right? Let's just uh, say this. Like, well, okay, let's say I agree with you for the sake of argument that um, human sperm or whatever is, you know, the same value as the unborn entity in the womb. If I agree with you for the sake of argument that those things are equally valuable because they possess human DNA, then the only thing you can really say as the pro-choicer is my position is inconsistent if someone masturbates and um, ends up getting rid of a lot of sperm or they scratch their skin and um, kill a lot of skin cells, the only thing you can say to the pro-lifer is that their, con their position is inconsistent. That's really all you can do and just say, well, why do the pro-lifer think um, the human unborn entity is more valuable than those other particular entities which also possess human DNA. The only thing the pro-choicer can say to the pro-lifer is that they're being inconsistent, but that in no way does anything to argue the point for the pro-choicer. To point out an inconsistency with the pro-lifer is not to establish an argument themselves that abortion is not wrong. All they can do is just say that the pro-lifer can be inconsistent. Imagine the pro-lifer says, you know what? I agree with you. So what if um, um, sperm and, and skin cells and all these other things have human DNA? I still say the unborn is more valuable than all those other things. Yes, I am committing mass murder when I scratch my skin, but I'm going to say that the unborn is more valuable than those things. 
So yes, you're right. I am a murderer when I scratch my skin. I am committing mass murder. What you gonna do? How you gonna respond, pro-choicer? The pro-choicer, all they really can do in the situation is say, pro-life, are you stupid? Are you being absurd right now? That is ridiculous. You're really going to argue that nonsense. All, all you are saying is scratching your skin is just as bad as abortion. You are insane. So basically the pro-choice, all they really can do is just get upset or frustrated that the pro-lifer is um, agreeing to their position for the sake of argument. And then they get mad and protest or frustrated and protest or however they respond. They'll just say, that's absolutely absurd. You are being absolutely ridiculous, absolutely absurd. And I just think your argument is just so, so stupid. Nobody in their right mind thinks scratching their skin is a murder. Nobody thinks that. You're just some absolutely crazy pro-lifer. And be like, well, yeah, you, yeah, you think that, but all you're really doing is just belly aching. You're not really refuting my argument. You just point out an inconsistency in my argument. Point out an inconsistency is not um, a refutation. It's just saying that, well, the pro-life is being inconsistent. Well, I may be consistent in saying that those things are equally as valuable for the sake of argument, but I would be inconsistent in the sense that I'd be treating um, the unborn with a uh, with, uh, higher preference. But the common thing about pro-choices is is that the central aspect of their position is that nobody should pass standards over a woman's body and she should be able to decide for herself what she wants to do with her body and what's inside of her. Nobody should put their standards upon her and make dictates over her body. Whatever she decides or whatever she defines is what it is. But for the pro-abort to have such a position, then they'd be violating the foundation of their own argument because they're looking at the pro-lifer and saying, okay, if you're going to say that's stupid and you're not murdering anything or anybody when you scratch your skin, then they are passing their standards upon your body and trying to define what is murder and what isn't. Don't you see how they um, end up violating their own position by protesting the consistency by agreeing to their straw man for the sake of argument? They want to say that it's okay to pass standards upon other people's bodies to decide that scratching your skin, in fact, is not murder. But it's not okay to pass standards upon a woman's body to claim that her aborting her fetus is murder. So it's okay for the pro abort to pass standards upon other people's bodies and say, no, you're not committing murder when you scratch your skin. You're just arguing and being stupid. They can pass standards upon your body and make that um, argument, but pro-lifers can't pass standards upon their bodies to suggest that a woman shouldn't do it because it's murder. So where did this whole bit come from that you can all of a sudden argue your standards upon what is murder or what isn't or what people do with their bodies if um, it's not murder for a woman to do whatever um, she wants with uh, her body and nobody can pass standards upon her body then you can't pass standards upon my body if I agree for the sake of argument that scratching my skin cells is mass murder you can't turn around and you know protests and absurdity, all you can do is really say that um, you, that I'm being inconsistent and you get upset, but you're not really refuting anything. So as the pro-lifer, you are actually in a, uh, a very prime position. You are actually 
in the better position here to agree with them for the sake of argument to expose them violating the foundation of their own position. So when they want to attack you with that straw man saying that sperm and skin cells and everything else like that are equally human by straw manning your argument, then just agree with them. And let them take that argument to this logical conclusion, and then they'll show that they violate their own foundation by doing so as well. So that's what I wanted to bring you guys, and just um, let those pro-choices have it when they want to bring up absurd arguments like that. You are in the position of advantage. You have the advantage as the pro-lifer when they bring up that absurd point. So thanks everyone for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Merry Christmas, God bless, and peace.